Hello everyone and welcome back to my podcast. This is Anne of Fiber, Floss, and Fiction and today is Sunday the 1st of December 2019. Uh, I hope everyone is well. A, a huge welcome back if you are a returning viewer and a hello and welcome if you're new to my channel. I hope that you have a reason to come back and visit with me in the future. Um, today I am having some trouble getting my brain around the fact that we are already here in the last month of 2019. It seems like this year has just flown by. Uh, we are currently having a cold snap here. It's definitely winter. It was single digits this morning when I got up and we had some snow over the Thanksgiving holiday. My husband is off for yet another business travel today. Uh, we'll be gone this whole week, so I thought I would take the opportunity to jump on this afternoon and get this recorded. I think I'm about a week overdue, so this is probably going to be a longer video. So uh, grab your beverage and crafty thing of choice, and we'll get started. So let's see. Let's go ahead and talk about knitting first. <clears throat> uh, you may re recognize the sweater I have been working on um, is finished since I'm wearing it. Uh, this is the Chauncey sweater by Isabella Kramer. It is a yoke patterned uh, fingering weight sweater and I knit it in my Ayrton sock from the Wooly Wonka Fibers yarn line uh, in Forest Primeval for the dark green and Chimney Sweep for the lightly speckled gray. Um, Happy to have that finished and happy to be able to wear it. It feels kind of Christmassy to me, even though it's not really a Christmas sweater, but um, let's say at least like Yuletide, and I think it's the colors in it more than anything else. Um, but it is nice and warm um, and completely done, so I am happy to have it in my warm sweater wardrobe for the colder days that we're having right now. So did finish that one up, um, didn't make a ton of changes to the pattern. The only thing I changed was that I did not knit the second set of short rows underneath the yoke in the back to give it kind of a longer hem in the back. I like mine just straight across. So um, all the fun stuff is up here at the top, and then it's just plain stocking it the rest of the way down. Um, so basically, it looks like that for the body. Um, yeah, it was a good, fun knit. Um, I recommend her patterns. They're well-written. They're easy to follow, fairly straightforward. Um, so not a ton of crazy stuff uh, going on in them. If you've done color work before, you shouldn't have any problems with this one. There's nothing very difficult about it at all. Uh, so let's see, let's talk about what I am working on currently. So today is the first day of December and one of my goals was to try to finish the beaded, the, the skirt part of the beaded dress that I'm working on. And I'm not quite there, but I am fairly far along on it and I will show you why or tell you why I opted to not finish it, but I'm working on obviously the gray part there with the little beads motifs on it and then there is, I'm not quite tall enough to show you all of it, the bottom of it. So I am up to basically the the thigh or the thigh and the hip join together on someone's anatomy. Um, so I just have one more set of these to do the bigger kind of cross shape and then the little smaller motif um, and then a decrease and then one or two more sets of this. So if you'll imagine kind of from here up is how much I have left to do to finish the skirt. 
Since we were, we were away for the Thanksgiving holidays though, I decided I didn't want to try to take this as my travel project for obvious reasons. Uh, so what I did is I went ahead and I cast on for the top, um, which is a slightly paler gray and it's going to have the little kind of diamond shaped motifs on it. Um, I did finally decide how I want to have this one work and I'm going to, I'm, I'm working in eyelets here and I'm going to have like a corset lacing up the back. Part of my issue with this piece is that I have to shoot photos of it and then it's going to go on to probably multiple runway shows, but I don't know the size of that person that it's going to go on other than in a very general sort of way. So I thought I might be better served if I worked this to look like a single piece, but actually have it in two pieces because then if somebody was a little bit shorter, they could pull the skirt further up underneath where the bodice came down. Um, and if I lace the back, if somebody's, you know, 35 inches, we can lace it a little tighter versus somebody who's 36 and a half inches around and have it be a little bit looser, more open space in the back. That was the only way I could figure out how to make all the logistics happen. So, um, I have this much done of the bodice, which is to say about halfway up to the armpits uh, maybe a hair less than halfway. So I feel like I've gotten the, an equivalent amount knit on this that would have finished the skirt off. So, um, my plan is to get the whole thing done by the end of December. And I think I'm in pretty good shape for that. So, uh, we have our photo shoot scheduled in January 25th or something like that. And then it will be at Stitches West, which is in February. That's where it will premiere. Uh, so working away on those, that's kind of my focus project for right now. Um, I did find out that the TSA people, while they have no problems at all with knitting needles, did not like crochet hooks. I had my bag searched um, for the little crochet hook I used to apply beads and they were very, uh, suspicious, I guess, of it. I'm not exactly sure why, because this seems pretty boring. And I don't, unless this smaller end they thought was actually like a point as opposed, like a stiletto type knife as opposed to a crochet hook. I'm not sure. At any rate, um, I had taken that with me to work on on the plane on the way out, which I did. I decided I did not wish to have my bag pulled apart uh, on the way home, so I put that in my checked luggage. And instead, I worked on a pair of holiday socks. Uh, yarn is from my stash, which I'm always on a quest to stash down. Uh, this is from Desert Vista Dye Works. Uh, she does mostly uh, self-striping hand dyed yarns. The colorway is Mint Cocoa Quilt and it was one of her holiday ones. Here is what it looks like in the skein. So holiday red, kind of an eggnog color, uh, peppermint green, and like a gingerbread brown is how I would describe that. And I got quite a bit done. Uh, cast on, knit the leg, put in my favorite Fish Lips Kiss heel. Um, this is actually my yarn that I dyed, but I, you can't really even tell what's her colorway, what's my colorway, so that's great. And then I started on the foot. So just basic stripey socks for the season. Um, no huge rush or goal or anything like that on these. Um, I'm just working on them as I work on them. And I'm maybe a third done the, the foot. So finish the foot and the leg on sock number one. Okay, so that is what I am working on and um, we'll just continue to plug away at that at times when I'm sitting waiting and I don't wanna haul that massive 
beaded project with me. Um, there's a fair number of times like that, so we'll see how that goes. Um, okay, so talked about all of those. Uh, the last little bit of knitting I wanted to mention is some shop news. Uh, if you are somebody who gets my newsletter, you would have found out today that the club for 2020, those slots are open. Um, just did a really brief kind of high level description. There are two, well, three options that you can opt for in this year's club. I've divided it up into three installments. Um, for each of those things, we're going to have a pattern and hand-dyed yarn and supporting videos to talk to you about techniques, um, kind of walk you through anything that is difficult in the pattern or things that you may not have done before, talking about fit, talking about finishing, talking about all of those good details. Um, so it will give you an opportunity to work on a project and get some kind of virtual support, if you will. We'll have the opportunity to ask questions in the group. Um, so each of the installments, those three things that I've got set up, you can either choose to do a uh, s straightforward accessory, kind of think one skein-ish type project, so cowl and shawl. So less shaping, more stitch pattern technique driven, that kind of thing. You can also opt for a garment. I have three sweaters that I've picked uh, to coordinate with hand dyed yarns and you can pick, pick your yarn color choices. Um, or you can just opt to get the videos. Uh, so if you're somebody who has a stash you wanna work through, uh, that would give you the opportunity to still participate, knit the sweater, or the accessory and get some kind of behind the scenes help. Uh, obviously the patterns that I've picked uh, and the yarns to go with them, if you buy those together, those are things I've actually already done the swatching and know that you've got a good chance of making that happen. Um, sorry, just wanna make sure that wasn't my husband um, getting his flights canceled because the two ahead of him were today. Um, so it gives you a little bit of a chance to do not only, um, some technique skill set building, but also to have some finished things at the end of the year that hopefully you can wear and be really proud of and be confident that you're going to have a successful outcome at the end. There's lots more information and descriptions in the uh, listings on the website. So I will link to that below. Um, also kind of a discussion on that uh, as well in the Willy Wonka Fibers Ravelry group. So if you're interested in either of those, please check those out. Um, it should be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and uh, again, with the added videos, um, I'm hoping that that will allow folks to have kind of a reference library that they can refer back to if they run into any trouble in the future, if maybe they don't get the project cast on and worked through as quickly as they like, um, those will still be videos that you can access as part of, of your club membership, um, whether it's in the, the three months or the four months that we're looking at that particular project or not. Because life, right? Um, anyway, so those are available uh, if you are a knitter and are interested, maybe go check them out. And of course, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. All right, let us go on to books of which there are a lot. Um, these are in no particular order, just as I have them written down. So <clears throat> I'm gonna start with a book called Chestnuts, Camping and Culprits by Cindy Bell. Um, this is kind of a cozy mystery, uh, and it's one in a series. I think there were three others before this one. Um, it's kind of all the things that you would think of in a cozy mystery, uh, kind of feisty heroine. Um, there's not a ton of violence. There's not a ton of graphic anything. Um, you know, they're kind of cute. They're upbeat. Uh, 
This woman happens to own a shop that sells nuts. And I needed a book that had a camping scene on the cover, which this one does. So these are not my favorite um, genre of books, but it was short and I read it and there you go. Uh, if you aren't familiar with this author, she's got a ton of cozy mysteries and cozy mystery series. So if you do like this genre, this might be one that you would want to check out. Uh, so I'm not going to spend a ton of time on that one because it was just kind of okay for me. Uh, the next book I read is called Mash Up. And I needed a book of short stories. This one has a really cool um, premise, which is it's taken the first line of other famous books and it's kind of rewritten the story behind them. So there's the opening line from Pride and Prejudice. There's the opening line from Moby Dick. Um, I think there were 13 stories in all. As with many short story anthologies, this one was a little bit uneven for me. There were some that I loved. The one on Moby Dick is priceless. It's so good. Um, Call Me Ishmael. And it's fun. It's set as if the characters are in kind of like a Chicago 1940s um, detective novel. So it, it's just, it's fun. It's quirky. That one was really good. There were some other ones that I kind of skimmed because I just didn't, I didn't like them as much. Uh, there were some, some really bizarre and out there concepts where folks were talking about things, you know, futuristic um, and very strange science fiction kind of themes. So again, not one of my favorite books that I've read this year, but definitely fulfilled that short story um, checkbox for School of Magical Stitches and Literature Extra Credit Reading. All of these are School of Magical Stitches Extra Credit Reading because that's what I do. Okay, next up, a book called All You Could Ask For. The author is Michael Greenberg. Um, this book is a, about three women the first third of the book is kind of about their lives, what was going on in their lives separately. And then they're all three diagnosed with breast cancer. And then the final two thirds of the book is after they meet each other on an in, in an online help chat type room for people undergoing breast cancer treatment. And so each one of them has a very different story and each one of them has a different treatment regimen and it, it ends on a positive note. So there is that. Um, it's not particularly a downer other than the fact that of course, a cancer diagnosis is in no way, shape or form a fun thing. Um, I didn't love this book either. Um, I'm starting with the books I didn't love for this go round. Okay, so first off, while I think a good author can write about pretty much anything, because part of being a good author is putting yourself in someone's shoes, I question why a male author wrote a book with three women as the main characters um, with breast cancer diagnoses, because that's a very tends to be a very uh, female-centric moment in people's lives. I know men can get breast cancer and it's not good either way. I just wondered what prompted this author to write this particular book. It doesn't seem like a topic that a male author would, would want to approach, feel comfortable approaching. Um, I don't think he necessarily did a bad job with it. I just wonder. I just wonder. Um, the other thing that I didn't love is the fact that one of the characters, who's the youngest of the three women, um, he writes about the fact that she ha is going to have reconstructive surgery done, but the timeline of the book seems to indicate that she like had that in there and it was like a two-day thing that she doesn't have to worry about and doesn't have to have checkups and 
there's no pain problems, whatever associated with that, which is not the case. So he kind of glosses over that in a very strange way and like moves on. Okay. Da -da. Um, and the book kind of wraps up a little too neatly. I thought, um, again, it was not a downer book. Uh, I think it's great in that it talks about how people approach, have different approaches to a difficult medical diagnosis and treatment plan and all of those things and how great it is to have the support of friends, especially if you don't have good family support. Um, so all of those things were positive parts of the book. I just didn't love it. I think it glosses over a lot of what goes on with that whole process. And uh, yeah, I'm still curious as to why the author chose to tackle this subject. Okay, moving on. Let's talk about books that I actually liked. <laughs> Uh, the first book is a short one, um, Alice Hoffman, one of my favorite writers. This is one of her older books, and I actually didn't know anything about it. Um, I was looking for a book that had a mother as one of the main characters, and this book is called The Foretelling. It's written as kind of a retelling of some of the myths of the Amazons, um, and how that clan and culture of women were fighters and what their lives were like and the strong um, matriarchal, you know, the queen's daughter is always going to become the next queen kind of thing. Um, and the thing I think I liked most about it is in this book, the the... Amazons are equestrians, so there's lots of interesting information about their horses and how they rode and how they prepared for battle, and um, it's a very short book. Um, the main character is the princess, the up-and-coming daughter of the queen of the Amazons, and it's mostly about her growing pains and dealing with a strong, powerful mother figure uh, who isn't really that interested in being a mom. She's more interested in being a queen and the ruler and in charge of her people and less about the upbringing of the young woman who is her daughter. Um, not really any magic in this one. If you're thinking practical magic, this is more of a sort of myth retelling and I loved it because it had horses and strong women in it and it's a quick read, so if you like that sort of thing, you'll probably enjoy this one as well. Um, I then read a book uh, that was the last in a series called Den of Wolves by the author Juliet Mariller. And I should mention, as always, Goodreads links will be down below. If there, any of these books are sound of interest to you, you can find them there. This was the third book out of three in the Dreamer's Pool series, which is sort of retelling of fairy tales, but I would say that the author probably expands the, the tales beyond where the original fairy tales started. And this particular one, I think she pulls from different uh, fairy tales and... Uh, children's tales. There's a little bit of Hansel and Gretel in there. She pulls in the fairy fairy realm. Um, it features the two main characters who are in the other books in this trio of stories about Dreamer's Pool. Um, Blackthorn, who's the healer, uh, the wise woman, and Grimm, who is uh, this very large guy who used to be a monk and they were imprisoned together and broke out of prison together and they are longtime friends that are kind of helping each other get through a difficult life and 
all of the bad things that happen to them in prison, they kind of take care of each other's nightmares and their support for each other. The main character in this story is this young woman who is about 15 and she's the daughter of a local landowner. He sends her to court to get her out of the way while he is having a new living space built uh, called a Hartwood House and it requires the wood, um, different types of wood to be used in it and it has to be created in a certain way but then once it's built it will protect the family that it houses. And the only way that you really know how to build this house is if you've lived with the Fae. So the builder is somebody who everybody thinks is a little crazy and he's kind of the wild man and his backstory comes out as he's building the house and Grimm winds up getting hired to help him. So it's this lovely blend of like fairy tales and a little bit of magic and um, Celtic folklore all wrapped together. I really like this author. I think she does a good job in her world development and in telling these tales that kind of have that flavor of a Grimm's fairy tale. Um, they're not the Disney versions of things. There's, you know, nasty bits in the woods and people are not always kind or who they say they are. Uh, so if you like that sort of thing, I would recommend um, the Dreamer's Pool series. Uh, again, this was book three of three. Um, the other two all feature those same two main characters, also very well written. I have read both of those in the last year, year and a half, I think, and enjoyed all of them. So also really enjoyed that one. Um, I then read a book called Warlight um, by Michael Andachi. I'm not sure how you pronounce his name, but if you've seen The English Patient or read The English Patient, this is the author of that uh, book and then that they made this screenplay out of. Um, and this is in, this feels very similar to The English Patient. It's set in uh, London just, just after the war, so it's 1945. And the, the main character is a young man who he and his sister have been left in the care of this slightly enigmatic, mysterious person who they call the moth because he never seems to, to land in one place. He kind of flits around all the time. He was a friend of their parents. His father has gone to the East uh, to work for a company. That's what the kids are being told. And his mother is going to go join their father. She leaves a week after he does. And so the kids um, are going to stay in their boarding schools and kind of get back to life as normal in their house under the care of this person called the moth. As the story unfolds, and this is kind of seen through this teenage boy's eyes, he winds up finding out more things about the moth. And the moth has a friend called... Um, that they call, whose his name is Norman, but they call him the darter. And they start to uncover that these two guys have basically been running illegal side jobs during the war and now after they've continue, continued on with that. And um, they've got kind of a whole host of shady characters and the boy is trying to figure out how his parents knew these men and so he slowly, slowly starts to unfold this story about his mother and what she did uh, during World War II and that comes out in little bits and pieces. And um, you're not always sure how much of it is his interpretation of events and how much is truth. Um, as you get further into the book, you realize more of the things that you think couldn't possibly have happened actually did that uh, relate back to his mother. So it's a little gothic and slightly creepy, um, but very, very well written. Um, it's not a super long book. I think it's about 200 pages. Oh, 275. Um, so a good one, if you're looking for one that's set during the World War II, greater World War II time period, 
Um, I really like this author's writing. He's got a great way of telling a story and letting it, you know, little by little, giving you hints and letting it unfold um, till you kind of get this, this other picture of everything that went on before. So that one was definitely a good read, which I would highly recommend. Um, and certainly if you've read The English Patient or liked that movie, uh, I think you would probably like that book too. It's told in a very similar fashion. Okay, last two books, both by the author Lee Bardugo. Um, these are set in her Grishaverse, meaning they're in the same universe, but two different sets of characters. They're both the first book in a series about two different sets of characters. So let's talk about um, Six of Crows first. This is the book I liked better of the two. Um, I enjoyed both of them, but Six of Crows I liked better. Um, I read a review that likened it to kind of an Ocean's Eleven set in this universe that she's created. And it's a group of six um, denizens of this urban area and they undertake kind of the greatest heist ever. They're charged with breaking into an impenetrable fortress that has a prison at the center to bust out uh, a scientist who has created this chemical compound that heightens the powers of the Grisha who are folks who have the power to, let's say, control air or wind, um, wind currents, the water. Um, there's members of the Grisha who can um, change your your outward appearance. There's ones who are healers. There's ones who are warriors. They all are people who have had some level of training. Um, in some of the cultures within this universe, they're highly respected, kind of almost artisan craftsman type people. And in some of the port parts of this universe, they are um, seen more as witches and people are afraid of them. And there's been a plan to try to exterminate as many of them as possible. So uh, the main characters in this uh, go to try to find the scientist who's created this, this chemical compound that heightens the great Grisha's powers. Um, the main character is kind of this boy from the docks who is at the worst of times a thug and at the best of times, a cunning businessman. He's, you know, 17, um, but he's pretty much lived on the streets his whole life. He's very street savvy. He kind of knows how to build this crew to go in and try to uh, rescue this, this scientist. Um, so there's a lot of adventure. There's good characters in this. Um, everybody who is in his crew is a nicely de defined character who you get their backstory unfolding throughout the adventure part of the story. Uh, I really enjoyed that. I think I'm gonna probably read on in that series. Um, I would like to know what else they do and find and get into and um, hear how their, how their stories progress. The next book, also by the same author, Lee Bardugo, is called Shadow and Bone. And again, this is set in the same universe. Uh, it's about these two orphans who they've been tested as little kids to see if they have any of the Grisha powers. Neither of them do. So they grow up to basically become foot soldiers in the army. And um, they are under attack in the fairly early stages of the book when the girl... Um, tries to save her best friend, this other orphan she's grown up with, and it turns out that she does have Grisha powers. And they're very exceptional powers that um, really no other Grisha have. And the, the section of the universe that they live in is being overtaken by this, this deep, dark shadow that is encroaching on cities and kind of eating things up. And she has the power to control light. So she is 
sort of pulled out of the army and she's taken away to undergo Grisha training um, by this prince who's known as the Darkling. And um, he's a very he's a very powerful Grisha who controls the dark powers and she controls the light. And um, she comes to realize that he's not everything that he has been presenting himself as and she's a little scared of him but um, also does not want him to take control of her powers which she's worried that he will, will try to do. So um, there is also action and adventure in this one. It's a little bit more traditional young adult writing, I think, where there's kind of the beginnings of a romance and, you know, it's one, it's kind of her as the main character. She's a um, feisty, go get them, learn lots of stuff, a little bit uncomfortable uh, socially, who is kind of coming into her own as the book goes on. So still a good read and I enjoyed that. Um, I love the universe that this author has built. It's so detailed, uh, lots of fun things in it. It's the kind of place you would want to go and visit, I think, and um, certainly learn more about and learn about all of the, the powers that the, the Grisha have. Um, but if I had to pick between the two, Six of Crows was my preference. Um, I liked it just a little bit better, but both good books and both good reads. Um, young adult genre, fantasy, um, and some magic in both of those. Just good escapist reading. So all good. All right, let's go on and let's talk about stitching. Um, I have a couple of FFOs that I wanted to share with you guys. I decided that since the holiday season is almost here, I should just get it, get it done and get my Christmas tea uh, project finished. So I did that. So here's that with the little tea, tea tag that I added. And I used a very pale green velveteen. Um, that that was from one of the color and cotton. I think the color and cotton Christmas box last year But at any rate, it was like just the perfect size for this uh, Love this one again. The pattern is from uh, With thy needle and thread Brenda Gervais and the name of it is Christmas tea If you follow Dina uh, half stitch cross stitch um, and her videos She also did this one this year, which she got framed and came out super cute um, loved how hers looked. I like the little pillow type ornaments because I can put them out on, I have a display table. So that, that one is going there as soon as I'm done filming this. And then I also finished my Welcome Summer from the Drawn Thread. I had finished the stitching on this and this one I also used Color and Cotton's hand dyed it's just her uh, Kona cotton, I think, that's in kind of a nice navy blue. So that picked up the navy blue. This is also a color and cotton thread. And then the red silk ribbon was in the Christmas box last year, which I just gathered and attached on that one. So this is not currently out, but it is ready for when next summer comes. So six months and then this, this can be out then. Uh, so I was just, you know, happy to have those like done and ready to go, all good. Um, okay, so then, hang on, trying to move some stuff around. For the Full Coverage Fanatics November monthly uh, stitch along, our theme was Things with Wings, and so I was working on Winter's Encounter, the mini version, because it's got that cute little bird in it. So artwork by Laura Prindle and charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. And I was pretty pleased with the amount of progress I got on this, considering that I did not have a lot of days at home in November that I worked on it. So I have these two pages done. There's one partial page that goes down to there. 
that still needs to be finished, but I opted to come up and work on this one here. And so uh, that is what I got accomplished. This odd thing is going to be the horse's eye. Believe it or not. So you can kind of see the, the way the mane is going on that. Um, it's finished down to here completely, so I'm obviously working in all that crazy confetti area. So this will be out again in January for a couple of different prompts, but um, that is where I am on that one currently. Happy to have some time on that. Then I also worked on... Um, we had a weekend event two weekends ago in the full coverage fanatics group called Big Strides, which was a challenge to spend the weekend working on your biggest full coverage piece, which for me is a stitching shelf. And even though I had met my goal for the number of pages I wanted to have completed on this this year, it's my biggest one, so out it came, and I had finished, I actually realized in my last video, I hadn't shown you guys the last page finish, so let me show you where this one is now. So I was actually here at the beginning of the year, and have worked across to here, and then I worked on all of this during the weekend for our challenge, and that is... this lady right here. So I'll get to that next vignette here. That's the little butterfly that, top of the butterfly. So um, this one will not come out again this year. That was, I mean, I wasn't even really planning on working on it um, except for this challenge. So uh, it was nice to have it out. It was nice to get some stitches into it, but it's okay that I don't work on it again till next year since, like I said, I had met my goal on that one anyway. Um, I hardly have anything to show you guys on this, but I did work on it, so I'm going to just share that with you. This is Christmas Morning Pets. Uh, it's a Dimensions Gold Collection Petite. My Lizzie, my Emma. Um, and I just worked on putting more stitches in in the cat. So I added more of the gray and I'm obviously working down there. This is a great travel one because the Ada is stiff enough that I can do just work on it in hand. It's all of the colors are already in it because it's a kit and it's pretty small. Um, it is one of the things on my list to finish in 2020, however. So I thought, well, I'll just put some stitches in and we were so crazy busy with travel uh, while we were away that literally I got like three threads put in total. So hardly worth mentioning. Uh, next up, I have been super focused on Village of Hawk Run Hollow. And I, I am on track for a November finish for this one and I'm gonna do it. I am going to get this finished. Um, since you last saw it, I finished the black, um, which was what I had left to do in there and actually the grass and there's back stitching on the tree. And then I started block 11, which is my last block to finish. So I have my little ghost children here who I have yet to stitch. Um, this one is kind of in the home stretch on this. I have a little bit left to do. I have the bell to add and the places that you see in here that are the windows um, and the trim are white, so, uh, or off white. I have to stitch those. Finish the grass. There's another tree branch that sits in here and the there's a kite that's right here. Uh, but the bulk of this block is done and I'm hoping with homework for of Magical Stitches this week that I can actually finish this and have this done, which would be great. I am so excited to get to that point on this. Um, I certainly did not think that I was going to be getting this done this year, but I feel like now it's 
it's going to happen barring any major catastrophe because I have 31 days to work on it in the month and I don't think I have that much to be done on it. So this is going to be kind of my focus until I get it done and completely done. <laughs> so that's where I am on that. Uh, so a little bit of planning and some haul type things. Uh, my friend Kim, who you know is Spartan Stitcher, who is my co-admin over in Full Coverage Fanatics, went to uh, visit family in Michigan and went shopping at what sounds like an amazingly good uh, LYS, no, LNS. Um, and she picked me up a couple of charts because she knows what I like. So horses, Ink Circles horseplay. That is so fun, I love it. And then uh, Plum Street Samplers, Fox View. This is another one of the animal stacks. I can't remember what the, she's calling that series, but it's the she's got the turkeys and the sheep and or the goats and the sheep and the foxes. I love the foxes. So this this one I'm probably both of them will get started next year, but um, I think I have fabric that would work great for this one. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but thank you, Kim. Thank you for thinking of me. You certainly did not have to do that while you were traveling with family, but I appreciate it. I love them. Um, they will definitely get work done. Um, I did make a purchase at the Heaven and Earth 50% off sale that was this, this week. Can you all guess what it is? That's right. Once Upon a Fairy Tale, I am doing the supersized Max Colors version. You will see this a lot next year. I am not starting it until, actually it will be the 2nd of December, but 2020, this will be my new year, new start. So I have the fabric for it. Uh, I'm basically ready to start. I did decide, and I was talking back and forth with um, Jemima, the rocking stitcher, about starting this because we're both going to be working on it as as well as probably 1500 other people uh next year and i had originally been toying with the idea of stitching this on a 32 count and tent stitching it to try to keep the size down because it's basically 40 inches by 20 and 28 and a half inches if you do it on 25 count and part of my reason for hesitating to do that was that I wanted to put this on scroll frames and my stand does like the full yard that is stitching shelf barely fits on it it's at like the maximum of what it can deal with so 40 inches was gonna be another four inches um, plus because you know when you add the extra on each side so um, 46 inches ish was going to be way too big. However, my brilliant husband, um, figured out a way to make the stand work. So all I have to do is get a set of the dowels, the actual stretcher scroll rods, and I should be good to go. So I have opted to do this on 25 count full cross, which is what I like. It makes me happy have the gridded fabric and I'm ready to rock and roll on the second so I'm really looking forward to this one I have slotted it in in a bunch of different prompts and I just love it I love everything about it I can't wait to get to the horses um, I normally start in this in this corner uh, but I think I'm gonna start down here somewhere and I may even start in the middle I know crazy pants right um, anyway so this is my, my one personal purchase this, this month. Um, and so the other thing I'm gonna be working on this month going forward, other than the Village of Hawk Run Hollow, which hopefully will get me to a finish, is for the Full Coverage Fanatics December Welcome Winter Sal. And I decided I'm going to work on a long winter's nap, the ornament. Artwork by Donna Gelsiger and charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. So I finished up the first page on this one. This is obviously his beard and his 
tummy and the beginnings of his cheek. Um, and I'm going to work this way across, you know, because with the ornaments you have basically the two middle pages are full, complete pages. The two pages up here are mostly full. They're just a hair shy of full pages. And then the two down here, same deal. And then everything else are partial pages. So I thought, well, if I get the two full, full pages done, that's good progress. And certainly this is a perfect theme for this time of year with Santa and the sleeping cat. So that you will see out in my next video um, with some progress in on it. I haven't, haven't stitched on that today. My plan once I finish this while it's getting uploaded is to go and build a fire uh, and snuggle up with the animals, maybe listen to some holiday music and stitch on that sucker. That's my afternoon Sunday goal, which Sounds really nice. I love to travel. We had a great time of visiting my family, my husband's family, kind of got to see everybody all at once on the East Coast, which was great, but you know, it was five days in hotels and on the road and driving around the DC Baltimore metro areas. It's, and just airplane travel. It's crazy. It's yeah, I'm glad to be home and I feel badly that my husband had one day at home and he basically did laundry and packed and now he's gone for another week. Um, just is what it is sometimes, I guess. So uh, I hope if you're here in the US and you celebrate Thanksgiving that you had a wonderful one and I hope that you've had a wonderful month of November in, wherever you are in the world. Um, looking forward to all of the fun things that are on tap for 2020. Um, if you're somebody who likes full coverage pieces, I invite you to swing over to the Facebook group. I'll put that link to our group below. Lots of challenges and fun things set up for next year. Um, and as always, you're welcome to join as few or as many of those as you'd like, as long as you come in, stitch on full coverage and show us your progress. So I think that's it for now. I'm going to try to be back in my normal kind of two week period. Um, maybe even a little shorter than that, and get you guys caught up with what I'm working on for early December. So until I see you next time, um, everybody enjoy this last month of the year. Um, be well, be happy, be kind. Talk to you guys later. Bye.